In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the brake rotors on a Pontiac G8. This applies to 2008 and 2009 models. It applies to base models as well as the GT, which is what we're working with here. So the first step is obviously to get this car jacked up, get the front wheels and tires off of it. And in order to do so, especially on my car because it's lowered a little bit, I had to build these little wooden ramps. And these things come in handy for oil changes. Anytime I've got to jack the car up, I drive it up on these ramps so I can get a jack under there. And after I get it up on the ramps, I can break these lug nuts loose. I use a 7 8 inch socket. Uh, these are actually metric lug nuts, but 7 8 is very, very close to the original size. So I break them loose, jack the car up, finish removing the lug nuts, and I can get that tire and wheel off of here and see what we're working with. Now, obviously, this thing is rusty. This brake rotor has been sitting for a little while and has developed a little bit of surface rust, but that's not the problem we're dealing with here. What we're worried about is a warped brake rotor. So what's happening is when I push the brakes, the steering wheel moves in my hand. It shimmies really bad. We're going to make really quick work of this. It's a very simple process. It's something you can do in the evening after you get off work. So our first step is getting this brake caliper out of the way. And to do that, we remove the two 12 millimeter bolts and they thread into this brake caliper bracket, which has sort of like a nut insert. And you'll notice that in some cases that nut insert will actually spin Sometimes you have to hold it in place with an 18 millimeter open end wrench. And once we get the caliper out of the way, we can get the brake pads removed. I'm going to reuse these pads because they have plenty of material left. Um, but this would also be a great time to go ahead and replace the pads since you've got it all taken apart. Next is removing the brake caliper bracket, which is held in place with two 18 millimeter bolts. Those are pretty tight. You know, I had to really put some muscle into it. It might be best to get a half inch ratchet or a breaker bar or just tap on it with a hammer or something like that to get it broke loose and then get that out of the way and the brake rotor simply slides off of the studs and you can put that thing in the scrap pile because I'm not a believer in turning brake rotors. I realize you could put this thing in a lathe, get it straightened up and use a little bit more, but removing material off of that surface is only going to make it warp even quicker. So on these cars, I just replace the brake rotors, no questions asked. I do not even consider turning them. And in this case, it was actually really cheap. I found these rotors, they're Raybestos brand. They were on closeout on rockauto.com. You can find all sorts of different brands on Rock Auto or any other website like that. Um, you know, I've used the Raybestos brand before. I was happy with it. So it just happened to be a coincidence that they were on closeout. They were like 20 bucks a piece, couldn't beat the deal. So I slide those over the studs make sure everything looks right, and then I can start putting this thing back together. The first step is to put that brake caliper bracket back in place. I use the original bolts, 18 millimeter head, tighten them up really good and tight, and then I can snap my original brake pads back in, or you can put your new brake pads back in, you know, whatever the case is. Put those in, and then I slide my caliper back in place. Now, this might be a little bit different process if you've replaced the pads and the rotor at the same time. You might notice that the caliper does not fit. So in that case, you'll have to use a C-clamp or something like that to push the piston in on the caliper in order to get it to clear. In my case, I didn't have to do that because I was only replacing the rotor. So I just kind of shimmied that caliper back in place over the pads, put the original 12 millimeter bolts back in place, and you'll see that nut cert kind of spinning uh, sometimes you have to grab that with the 18 millimeter open end wrench to make sure that you get it nice and tight. Once that's tight, we can put the tire and wheel back on. Now we can lower the car down off the jack, torque our lug nuts, and then we're ready for a test drive. But before we drive, we need to pump the brakes just a few times, and that'll kind of get our caliper piston set back where it needs to be, because especially if you have to clamp that piston and squeeze it in, your brake pedal is going to feel a little bit funny before it kind of finds its new normal. So uh, definitely do that before you get on the road. And then what you want to do, it's the term is called bedding in the brake rotors, which is kind of like breaking them in. So what you want to do is find a good stretch of road where there's not a whole lot of traffic. And you're going to start off by performing three to four medium stops from 45 miles an hour. Now you don't have to come to a complete stop, but basically what you're doing here is building up heat in the rotor. Uh, then after that, you're going to do five or six aggressive stops from 60 miles an hour down to about 15 miles an hour. You don't want to come to a complete stop. Uh, you know, you're basically just continuing to build heat each and every time you do this. And eventually you'll have enough heat 
in the rotor where it's going to take just a little bit of that pad material and apply it to that fresh metal and uh, that is the bedding process so that's pretty much all you got to do after that you know you're ready to go you're ready to hit the road and just do normal driving or aggressive driving or whatever you want to do thank you for following along i hope you hit that subscribe button to stay tuned with other projects we got going on and other tech videos thank you for watching